David Brady is the CEO and co-founder of Global Pro Traders. He has been following the silver market for decades. This is what he says. All the market needed, uh, all gold and silver needed to go in the opposite direction was a, a catalyst. And we got it. I thought it would be Powell. It turned out not to be at the FOMC conference call. But the next day, Lagarde provided us with one because the euro dropped when they were more dovish than expected. Euro drops at 60% of the Dixie. What did the Dixie do? It went up. Dixie and go, you can run this yourself. Have a near perfect inverse correlation right now. And yeah, correlations break down, but seeing is believing until it ends, stick with it. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, you got those ludicrous employment numbers, which support a hawkish stance on the part of the Fed. And then you see in the calendar, that's Powell's speaking on when, uh, Tuesday, and you're concerned like this guy's going to come out swinging. So all of those factors just were the catalyst for what was already signaled was going to happen. And what do I mean by signaled? The main signal, well, there's a whole bunch of them, but sentiment was uber bullish. Beyond, where we're back to the August 2020 peaks in bullishness. Now, all the people that were telling me, no, 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 it's not a nonsense. I'm looking at data and it's telling me that it's as high as it was at the peak, the record high in 2020. Not a good sign. It's a contrarian indicator. It tells us going south. But I don't rely on one indicator. Look at the MACD on both the daily and the weekly. But look at the weekly one. Did you know that it was as high as it was, not in 2020, since 2011 peak at 1923? Wow. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I mean, that's 11 years ago. Uh, that, 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 you don't have to do any more analysis and go, holy hell, you know, that, the, that was the peak of the market that led to a drop for four years of, what was it, 1923 down to 1045, 46% or something like that. <laughs> My point is that... Uh, the MACD was screaming overbought, and I sent out um, uh, I, I sent out a tweet saying this, and you can do it yourself. You go back to even just 2020, and look at every time the MACD reaches a peak and then dips in the on the next week. It's the weekly MACD. When that MACD dips, the market tends to go down. But this thing had just kept going up and up and up, and then went to the 2011 uh, high. And I said, it's a week or two of tops. This thing, the, the, the first week you see this dick tip down, gold and silver going down. Mm -hmm. Of course, RSI was overvalued. It was neg negatively divergent uh, two days before the peak. Uh, yeah, the MACD line had turned down. And this is on daily and weekly charts. Uh, to me, the the... I focus on extreme signals, go, and I've, done, I've developed that process going back to 2006. Extremities. I don't play the noise in between. I look for the extreme highs and the extreme lows because you increase your probability of success. And I will admit, I was early on this one. Uh, I originally started talking about a pullback in December. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was emphatic about it in the time you mentioned a little over a week ago, saying the peak in gold is imminent. Because I was looking at this MD, uh, MACD and it was like screaming at me, saying, uh, this is going down. And when I saw that it happened nine times in the past two years, that every time it turned down, uh, to me it was obvious, all it needed was a catalyst. And we had a whole bunch of them uh, last week. Well, I thought it would be Powell, but then you had ECB, the following day, and then you had the employment data on Friday, and the rest is history. Now, we, we can pat ourselves on the back about what happened in the past, but what people really want to know is where did we go from here? Mm -hmm. Well, Dixie is going up right now, and that's something else I was forecasting for quite some time, and finally it's come to life. Uh, I, but, you know, when it goes above 106, you know, you're going to get all of the Dixie Bulls back in and go, oh, we're going to 120, we're going to 130 and milkshakes all around. Um, whereas I'm a, a believer in the Fed's trilemma when it's stocks, bonds and uh, the dollar. It's those three. They can only you know uh, support two out of those three. Which one do you think they're going to sacrifice? The dollar. 
to push up stocks and keep uh, uh, bonds afloat. Mm -hmm. And so I see it going to 106. They'll all get bowled up again. We may get up to 110, 111, and back down we go. And that is wave three of gold and silver just take off. And uh, so that's that's my short-term expectation. When I say short-term, we're talking weeks, probably March, that you'll see the peak in Dixie. You'll see the bottom in gold and silver. And if you're not buying that, I'm not going to use any expletives on this call, but it's going to be too obvious for words, in my opinion. The only way this breaks down is if we break 1750 report, uh, support in gold and, you know, for confirmation that something else is afoot, we go through 1618 low. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. There are other people out there who see that. I don't. I We got a wave one. This is the pullback to a higher low. Uh, when that Dixie peaks and starts to turn around and go back down again, You'd be not. You'd be nuts not to buy gold and silver at the and the miners in particular. Mm -hmm. They're just going to go ballistic. David, when we get that reversal, what typically leads that move? Is it silver? Is it miners? Is it gold? Is there kind of a a set, let's say, a leading indicator that that tends to lead the rest of the pack? Yeah, it's but it's either gold or silver leads. Miners are always last, um, but. They tend to swap shirts, uh, to use a football term. Sometimes it's gold. Most of the time it's gold. Last time it was silver. Mm -hmm. So the, the most the most recent rally was led by silver. And then the pullback in uh, silver was far ahead of the top in gold. I believe that silver is going to lead out next time because it's underperforming for quite some time. And then when we get down there, it's silver that's going to lead the way up. But honestly, I don't care which one that does it as long as you see one or the other start to take off you don't think the other one's going to follow mm -hmm. i mean gold is the big brother and silver is the little brother but silver is poor man's gold and when this starts to become a mania which it will uh silver is going to go up faster and higher than gold and we know this based on precedent from 1974 to 1980 gold went up 24x silver went up 36x 37x to be exact uh, from 2000 to 2011, gold went up 8x, silver went up 12x. Is there any reason to expect anything different this time around? No. But I expect it to be even bigger than that because mm -hmm. we have a, a GSR, gold-silver ratio, in the 80s, and it's up around 84, 85. That's got to go all the way down to about 15, the same level in the 1980s. So whatever gold does, you could have 4x that in silver, 5x, 6x. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, what is it? Closer to 6x, yeah. Sorry, from 80s down to 15. Mm -hmm. I have to work on my math. Getting old. Well, it's a good thing you're a you're a trader and you can use a calculator from time to time, right? <laughs> oh, that's no, that's blasphemy. You know, yeah. If you start using the calculator for simple numbers, then you're certainly gone in the head. Yeah. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. 
you have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Markus Dahn.